This is a mechanical keyboard that cost me just three pounds from Timu, the Mage G Star 61. Now in my initial video, I was actually quite impressed with just how much you got for three pounds with this keyboard. It was really, really awesome for what it cost, but it wasn't great and it wasn't anywhere near as good as my actual keyboard. And more than anything, it had this weird like ringing bell sounds to the keys every time you pressed them and it was super annoying. So, in what was probably a complete waste of money, I spent £35 on some new switches, the Akko CS Matcha Greens, and I spent about £15 on AliExpress for some retro NES style keycaps in the XDA profile which I've come to enjoy on my personal keyboard. A controversial opinion, I know. Oh, and I also used some foam, which came from some old packaging. That was obviously free. So, we begin on a journey to answer, can spending £60 on a £3 keyboard make it better? And if so, how much better? So the first part was obviously to take it all to pieces. After the tedious task of taking all the keycaps off one by one, anyone who's done that before will know how annoying that is, I then had to remove some tiny little screws which were holding the PCB and the plate into the case after taking those out. And with a little bit of force, we managed to get out everything and we were left with just a plastic case and everything else attached to the PCB. This is where the foam came in. I thought that maybe if I could put some in the bottom of the case, it might just help with the hollowness sounding of the keyboard and just make it all feel a little bit nicer when you're typing on it. So I transported myself back in time to many years ago when my daughter was much, much younger and I uh, got my best arts and crafts hat on, cut the foam up and tried my best to get it into place so that it would fit into the keyboard case. I had to poke a few little holes here and there to allow the screws to go through and try and get it positioned in a way that it wouldn't block the PCB from going back into the case. So after a little bit of messing around and a little bit of sellotaping things to try and make them sit flatter, we got it to a point where I thought it would probably work. So next we went back to the PCB and we needed to remove all the original switches. Another laborious task that is just part of building a keyboard. So I grabbed the switch pulling tool that came with the keyboard and one by one, we pulled them all out until there was none left and the plate came away from the PCB. It was at this point that I decided I should probably try and replace the stabilizers too, right? I had a few odd ones left over from when I built my keyboard. So I figured they can't be worse than the ones that come with a three pound keyboard. So I wasn't sure if they would fit, but they both plate mounted, so I thought it'd probably be fine. Tested it out, they did work. One of them I couldn't get to fit on the backspace key. It was an odd one compared to the other ones I had. I can't remember where it came from, but it just didn't fit. So I had to install the original one that came with the Timu keyboard on the backspace key. But all the other keys, the shifts, the enter and the spacebar got upgraded stabilizers while we were at it. Next up was to install the new switches. And I was a little bit nervous at this point because this keyboard, from what I'd read online, only fits certain switches. Now it only takes three pin switches, which is fine normally, but Apparently the holes with the legs go in are really tiny. So after Googling around and searching, I found that the only switches that tend to fit without filing legs down and stuff were the Utemu switches, which I haven't used, but I don't think they're very good, and the Akko CS switches. So that's what I settled on. After nervously trying the first one, it actually went in just fine. And we carried on and installed every other switch until everything was pretty much back together. I decided not to lube the switches this time around. It's not gonna be my daily keyboard. Didn't think it was worth it. It's so much messing around and frankly, I couldn't be bothered. But according to Akko, the CS switches do come factory lubed. So that's better than nothing, right? So at this point, really, it was time to try and get the PCB back into the case. And with a little bit of squishing and forcing and trial and error and repositioning the foam underneath, I did manage to squish it in, push it down and put the screws back in and it all held together pretty well. And the USB socket on the back lined up, which was a bonus. We were then onto the final tedious part of putting a keyboard together, and that was to replace all of the keycaps. At this point, I was pretty pleased that when I was recording B-roll earlier on for this video, I had laid the keycaps I needed out in order, and I'd kept them pretty much in that position until this point. So it made it quite easy that I could just go row by row, key by key, grab it, pop it on, grab it, pop it on. Pretty simple, pretty quick, and we were nearly good to go. So at this point it was all starting to come together but the big question now in my mind was 
does it still actually work after all my messing around with it? So popular keyboard software VIA has a tool on their website where you can check your keyboard and make sure it's working. So I headed over to the VIA website, plugged it in, it lit up straight away, which was positive, right? And I ran through the keyboard tool where basically you just press every key on your keyboard and it lights up to tell you if that key is working or not. And I'm pleased to report they all worked absolutely fine first time. So with that, it all works, but what do we end up with? Well, here it is. The three pound Timu keyboard that now costs more like 63 pounds. Take a look. So here it is in the flesh, people, and I have to say, it's, it's, it's impressive the difference that it's made. Those Echo CS switches are actually really nice. I do really like them. I would consider them in my actual keyboard, to be honest. They're, they're really, really nice. I currently use the cream yellow Gator on switches, and these ones are actually really, really nice. I, I do like them a lot. Is it a big improvement to how it was before? Absolutely. It's night and day, the difference. It still sounds a bit hollow, and it still sounds a bit plasticky. They are obviously a cheap keycap set as well on there, not an expensive one. But is it worth doing this yourself? Taking a really cheap keyboard and trying to upgrade it to make it good? I don't really think so. It was fun for the sake of this video and it was fun to figure out just how much we could get from this and how, how good it would be compared to where it started. But by the time you're spending like 60 plus pounds on trying to make a bad keyboard good, just save a little bit more money. I mean, if you save 75, 80 pounds, you can get one of the Akko keyboards on sale, which is gonna be way, way nicer. If you get to 100 pounds, you can get like a Keychron or something like that, probably, which is gonna be way nicer. And also for around that 100 pound sort of price, you can buy like the GMK67 and some switches and some keycaps and actually build something out to so the way you want it, how you want it to look, how you want it to feel, what kind of switches you want, you get choices and you're ultimately gonna get a far better result than what you are from this. So it was an interesting experiment. Will I be using this keyboard? No, I won't. It'll probably live on one of the shelves behind me here as a kind of memory of this video going forward. Uh, it was fun, I enjoyed doing it. It was interesting to see what difference it made and it has made a massive difference. Don't get me wrong, it has made a massive difference, but I don't think it's worth that investment. Maybe if you wanna upgrade over time and you, if you've already got one of these keyboards, it could be worth buying some switches and some keycaps you're doing it sort of step by step and then maybe down the line you buy another bare bones keyboard and you take these good switches and keycaps and put them into that so you're not having to buy everything all at one time it's kind of an upgrade path you could go down if you've already got one of these but don't go out and buy one of these and a load of switches and some keycaps to try and make a good keyboard it's not worth it i did it for fun i thought it'd be an interesting video and i think it was did you think it was interesting have you got any questions or comments about the video please let me know in the description down below and if you want more tech videos please do subscribe we flipped the switch to be a purely tech based youtube channel now so forget the old videos if you love tech and that kind of stuff stick around you're in the right place and i think that's about all i've got to say for this one people so i hope it was fun thank you for joining me remember you are all awesome and until next time people stay bandproof i'll see you really soon peace